What's up YouTube peeps and barbecue freaks? Thank you guys for stopping by today. Today we're gonna do a brisket on the pit barrel cooker. Now I've done a brisket before, actually it was just a point, and I cooked it on the grate the entire time. This time we're gonna hang it, and uh, we're gonna see how this turns out. So I'm excited to try it this way. Uh, I'm also using a new rub, which is the Black Ops from uh, Oak Ridge. Heard a lot of great things about it, never tried it. And uh, we're going to try it today. Thanks to John Hill. Appreciate you sending me uh, that rub, buddy. Um, let's get this trimmed up, inject it, rub down, and on the pit barrel cooker. Let's get started. All right, so what I have here is an eight-pound brisket. And I went ahead, I went ahead and uh, just trimmed it just a little bit. Didn't take too much off the fat side, but I did remove the silver skin on top. And I am going to inject this bad boy. Now, I normally don't inject when I'm cooking a brisket at home, but um, part of the reason I'm cooking this brisket, um, well, I'll show you later, but I want to collect all the juices at the end, so I'm going to inject it, and then we'll get it rubbed down, and in the smoker cook this on the pit barrel cooker I'm not sure how long it's gonna take I'm not focusing on the temp or anything we're just gonna throw this on there we're gonna hang it this time uh, I did do a, a point on the pit barrel and I just put it on the grate but this time we're gonna hang it so we're gonna get this injected and since it's only about eight pounds I'm I only made about eight ounces worth of injection, so uh, I'll get all eight ounces in here. We'll get it seasoned up and uh, on the smoker. So let me get this injected and I'll pick back up once it's time to uh, rub it. All right, so I have the brisket injected. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back. I'm going to use my SPG mix. This is usually, I mean, uh, the last time I did a brisket, this is all I use, but this is also like my base rub for everything. So I'm gonna use this as my base rub for this brisket. And the actual rub that I'm gonna use, or the other rub that I'm gonna use, is uh, the Black Ops from Oak Ridge. Uh, John Hill uh, sent me some, appreciate it, brother. And uh, I'm gonna try it out on some brisket. I've heard a lot about it. Um, but I've never tried it, so we're gonna give it a shot. Got that SPG, and I'm just gonna come back with this Black Ops. Tasting it out of the bottle. Um, he didn't send it in the original bottle, so that's why I'm not showing you the bottle. It's in a different container. But uh, tasting it out of the container, out of the bottle, it actually tastes really, really good. I can, uh, I can see why this would go great on brisket. This is actually a rub that I've been meaning, wanting to try for quite a while, and um, just never got around to it. But we are today. Thanks to John. Appreciate it, brother. And I'm gonna give this a really good coating. Again, part of the reason that I'm injecting, you know, I you know I normally don't inject at home when I'm cooking a brisket, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm gonna once I wrap it, I'm going to uh, collect the juices once once it's done after we wrap it. Pat, don't rub. Um, and I I strain the fat from the liquid from the juice, so that way I just get nothing but. Uh, that beef au jus that is just really, really flavorful. You know, it's got the, the rub mixed in with the injection and the fat, some of the fat from the brisket. It's just really good. And what I do with that is, and this is one of my little secrets that I'm giving away, is um, like at a competition, I'll, I'll say that juice, that au jus, and at a competition when I'm cooking a brisket, 
when it's time to wrap, instead of putting like beef broth in there, I'll use um, that uh, leftover beef as you. It's just full of flavor. And man, I'll tell you what, it adds a ton, a ton, a ton of flavor to your, uh, to your meat. So I'm making some at home and then, you know, usually each time I, each time I make a brisket, I'll save that as you, try to save that as you um, for my next cook. So that's it. I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour before we put it on the grill, on the pit barrel. So I want that that marinade uh, or that injection to um, to kind of penetrate the meat and just soak in there. We're gonna let this rub set. I should have injected it last night and I didn't, but uh, you wanna inject the night before if possible and just let it uh, marinate and all that injection. So we're gonna let this sit for about an hour. I'll pick back up once we're ready to go on the um, pit barrel. Stay tuned. All right, before I let this sit, I'm gonna go ahead and get this hook in here. You wanna hook it from the point area, the thick point. Get this in here. I am gonna double hook it. There you go. Um, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go with one hook. I think they got through enough. Yeah, I'm just gonna go with one hook. I'm not gonna double hook it after all. I think that'll be just fine. So, we'll let that, I'm gonna hit it again with some of this rub to cover up the spots that I uh, rubbed off and then we're gonna let it sit. All right, the uh, briquettes are ready to go. Got them here, got the uh, basket filled up. gonna move these around a little bit the wood that I'm going to use is uh, oak and pecan that's the combination that I prefer got that in there we're gonna take our wood chunks got our pecan some oak and then we're gonna get the rebars in here. And let's go grab this brisket, throw it on. All right, so I've got the brisket here, as you can see. I hope you can see this. That rub has really sweat in on that brisket. I hope you're able to make that out. So we're going to take it, just hang it right in here. And I don't know if you can see, but I'm about <laughs> an inch and a half away from, I'm probably about two inches away from that charcoal down at the bottom, but we should be fine. Um, so we're going to get this on, or we got this on, we're going to get the lid on and just let it run. I don't know how long it's going to take, I don't know what temperature we're cooking at but uh, we're gonna let the pit barrel do what it does. So again, get the lid on and I will spritz throughout the cook. Um, I'll show you what I'm gonna use to spritz uh, once we start that, but it'll prob probably be after the first hour. So let me get this lid on and I'll pick back up. It has been going, I also got a rack of baby bags in here, but this brisket has been going for just over three hours. This is kind of what it's looking like right now. So, looking good. This, um, these ribs are looking really good too. This is, I'm doing a little practice run them with the flavor profile here, but damn it, those look good. So, anyway, I'm gonna get this closed up. Oh, I'll show you what I've been spritzing with. After the first hour, I started spritzing with, uh, let me get this lid on real quick. This is what I'm using to spritz. 
I can't believe it's not butter. I'm putting this on the ribs and on the brisket about every 20 to 30 minutes. And I started that after the one hour mark. So that's what they're looking like now. Um, the brisket still has, I'm probably gonna let it go for another two hours unwrapped and then we'll wrap it. All right, you guys, this brisket has been on for, uh, what time is it? 2.30, so probably about uh, 9 45 10 11 12 1 so almost four and a half five hours and uh before we finish this a b look at this right here you guys i'm watching brother a b over smoking and grilling with a b he's got a live feed going so i'm watching brother a b while i'm making this brisket shout out to a b anyway i'm gonna get this hook out uh this is fat up i'm actually gonna flip it up upside down and um, <clears throat> put it fat cap down. So let me get this hook removed really quick and I'll pick back up. All right, so I have this brisket. Uh, actually, you know, one thing I wanna show you really quickly, let me get over here. Some of you are, are probably wondering, and it's something that I was wondering also. So this is a fat, we're gonna flip it upside down. Um, you know, the I think one of the things that people worry about the most is the, the piece of the meat that's closest to the fire and it burning well this corner right here you guys can make that out um, it was still hot this piece right here was the piece that was closest to the fire and it's got a little char on there you know it's a little black but it's actually not that burnt so you know even being that close to the fire it still didn't like totally burn up the meat next thing we're going to do is I'm gonna wrap this bad boy up. And you can see it's still kind of hard. It still has a lot of um, uh, rendering to do and, and softening to do, and that's why we're gonna wrap it. But to the wrap, I'm gonna add some chicken broth. Let me get this folded up here. And what I'm uh, hoping for is that you know there's still some fat in here that's going to render out and as it does there's still some of that injection that we added to this that's going to render out and all that is going to mix with that beef broth and we'll have that beef au jus at the end of the cook that I'm uh, looking for we'll take that use a grease separator separate the grease from the au jus and save that grease for the next cook off that I do so let me get this wrapped up Heavy duty foil, you guys. Always use heavy duty foil. And double layer it. I took the um, uh, metal rods out of the pit barrel and I put in the rack. So when we put this back in the pit barrel, we're gonna lay it on the rack. And at this point, you know, I'm going to let it go for at least two hours. And at that mark, I'll check it for tenderness. So let me get this back on. And the next time I pick up, the brisket should be done. All right, I took the rods out, put the rack back in. But I am going to put the rods back in now. Again, you know, part of the reason for that is to help control that, that temperature. So, or the airflow. So we'll get the lid back on. And like I said, we let it go. And I'm not going to touch it or check on it for at least two hours. All right, you guys, this brisket is done. It's been wrapped in foil on the pit barrel cooker for two hours. And I did probe it with my thermometer. As you can see, 207, 208 in the flat. 209, 210. Same thing in the point. So this thing is done. And this probe is actually going in here really easy. So this is a tender brisket. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave it vent like this for about uh, 10 minutes. Let some of that steam come off. And as you can see, there's still that ajou in there and there's, there's some in the pan. I have it in a foil pan here. When I poked it with earlier, I kind of poked with a foil. So some of it started leaking. So there's ajou in here that um, I'm gonna separate. But right now we're gonna let this brisket rest for about 10 minutes 
uh, 10-15 minutes uh, steam and then I'm going to take it out of the foil. I'm going to wrap it in a new piece of foil, wrap it in the towel and put it in a cooler and let it sit for uh, probably a couple hours or so. Um, <clears throat> you want to let that meat rest before you cook it so we're gonna let it rest for a couple hours the longer you go the better but this is what it looks like now I'm happy with that and we'll see what it tastes like uh, in a little while all right you guys this brisket has been rested uh, or has been venting for a little bit we're gonna take it move it to a new piece of foil <laughs> I'm telling you guys this right here holy cow this tastes really really good just took a little piece off here earlier look at that right there wow <laughs> that is excellent anyway I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna wrap it in a towel, put it in a uh, cooler, and let it sit for a couple of hours. And look at that. This thing is, it's tender. Holy cow, tastes good. Anyway, let's wrap it up. And the next time we pick back up, I'll be cutting into it. All right, now that we got the brisket wrapped and put aside, what we're gonna do is, take this um, au jus from this brisket and we're just going to pour it in this grease separator let's hope we don't make a mess get all that in there any grease from this pan we want to make sure we get in there as well so what's going to happen is let's get that in there get all that in there What's going to happen is this this um, this fat will separate from the rest of the au jus, and when it does, um, we're going to pour that au jus in a separate container and um, freeze that. And once we freeze that, once we separate the fat from the au jus, we're going to take the au jus, we're going to freeze it, and the next time I have a cook off, I'm going to take that au jus, and when I when it comes time to wrap my brisket at the next cook-off, I'm going to pour that au jus into the uh, foil wrap. And what that's going to do is, is, it's just like adding beef broth, but you're adding an au jus that has tons of flavor in it already. So it's just going to enhance the flavor of your brisket. So a lot of times when I cook at home, I'll inject strictly for this purpose. So I could, I could get this au jus separated and save it for cook-off. Um, so that's that's what we're gonna do with uh, here again next time I pick back up we'll cut into this brisket and just give it a taste and see what it tastes like all right you guys the brisket has been resting for about three hours we're gonna cut into this bad boy and take a look let's see the grains are running this way so we're just gonna cut right across here that panting you're hearing of course, is the damn dog. Every time I'm cutting meat or cooking meat, he's right there waiting for his taste test. So this thing is cutting really well. I'm liking that. Let's go. Let's go one more here. Let's take this and see what it looks like. I have no idea what the inside is going to look like, but we're going to find out together. Alright, 
not a lot of smoke ring. Let's see. It's not too bad. I mean, tender-wise, the tenderness, you know, looks like it's there. Let's pull it apart. Yeah, it pulls apart really well. Let's give it a, well, we'll give it a taste test in a minute. But, doesn't look like a lot of smoke ring. And I will tell you that I, I did notice the wood chunks that I added in there uh, actually took quite a while to catch. So I'm, I'm gonna guess that's why there's not a ton of smoke ring on, on here. But, the ribs, you saw those ribs earlier that I had hanging. When I tasted those, those were really smoky. And they were on the, you know, at the same time with the same amount of smoke. So, um, you know, I know those got some smoke. Let's cut into. All right, sorry about that. I got a call that came in. Um, not sure where I left off, but the ribs that I was uh, that I cooked earlier, those actually had a lot of smoke flavor to them. So there's your your brisket is. You can see that. Let's move this up. You know, the brisket is tender. There's not a lot of smoke ring. But that's okay. We're going to give this... Put that there. Let's give this piece a try. Alright, let's give this brisket a taste. Really tender. I'm liking that Black Ops. Though there isn't much of a smoke ring, I'm actually picking up some smoke on this. But again, I did notice that those wood chunks didn't burn all the way down. This brisket took about, um, I think it was seven and a half hours to cook. So it actually cooked fairly fast. All right, so the brisket turned out really good. I will say that I didn't tell much of a difference between you know, uh, hanging it on the pit barrel compared to cooking it on the Weber Smoky Mountain or in my Traeger, um, outside of, uh, it not having the smoke ring like it normally does off of the Traeger or off of the WSM. Uh, but what I did like about this one is that unlike the, um, the Weber Smoky Mountain or unlike the Traeger and hanging it on the pit barrel cooker, it allowed me to get that bark, uh, the same all the way around the brisket so whether I cut this fat cap up or fat cap down I still had nice bark all the way around compared to you know where if I would have cooked it like on a say a Traeger and done it meat side down the meat side wouldn't have been as pretty as I'm sorry the the fat side wouldn't have been as pretty as the meat side so hanging it it allowed me to get that same even bark all the way around flavor wise Quite honestly, I didn't, I didn't um, taste a huge difference uh, when it came to the brisket. Now, I, I have done ribs on the Weber, on the uh, pit bro cooker, and I tasted a huge difference when it comes to ribs off of that compared to uh, one of the other smokers. But the brisket, this time around, I didn't tell uh, much of a difference. So, it still turned out good. It was really tender. I was worried about the bottom of that meat closest to the fire burning up. Uh, that really wasn't an issue. Um, I know some of you guys worry about that, but, um, so far, and I've done ribs and brisket on it, on the pit barrel cooker, um, that's not an issue. So that's the brisket cook. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys next time. Take care.